this week on Kentucky Afield. Here we go. This here's a little better white bass. The spring months offer some of the best fishing that the state has to offer. And we're at the Salt River trying our luck. Oh, here we go. Next, we're talking to the experts and finding out how native seed mixes can be beneficial for wildlife and landowners alike. Then, we're in Eastern Kentucky and fishing for one of the state's most elusive predators. Fish, got a fish on fish right on. there. Bait change and a fish on. It's all next on Kentucky Afield. Got him. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plumb floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! My first musk. <laughs> <laughs> Leo! Yeah, we're getting the keeper. Here it goes! Oh. Boom! Oh. Oh. Wow, that happened fast. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Spring gives Kentucky outdoors men and women many reasons to be excited. And one of those reasons is the white bass run. Well, today I'm doing one of my favorite springtime activities here in the state of Kentucky. That's chasing white bass. The white bass that are in the lakes will run up the rivers and they will do their spawning in the flowing water. Well, I'm here at Salt River today here at the Palmer Road access area. Right now it's turkey season, so it gives us a couple other things to kind of consider. First off, this road is normally open where you can drive all the way up and down and really fish wherever you want. Today, because of turkey season being open, this wildlife management area is open for someone who wants a turkey hunt. It's closed. So what that means is I've got a backpack some waterproof boots. I'm gonna grab some gear and we're gonna hoof it to the water and until I see the right kind of water conditions I want, we're gonna fish our way toward the lake and hopefully locate some white bass. Well, I will say the water looks pretty good. This is late in the white bass run. Typically, I've caught them before now. Now that I see the water, I'm gonna go with about an eighth ounce head something I can cast almost all the way across. I'm gonna pull a little minnow imitating bait. We'll use this and if it doesn't work, we'll be ready to move on to something else. That's good, we didn't catch one on cast one. Don't need that jinx. So my goal was to walk toward the lake, but due to the fact that the further I go, I'm still not catching fish and I'm not seeing people and there's cars up there, we're gonna go the other direction. You make six, seven, eight casts in an area. You feel like you fan cast it pretty good. It doesn't happen. It's time to move 60, 70 yards and try it again. Sometimes you gotta have some patience and you gotta find out where the fish are at, what they wanna eat that day, and how fast do they want it? I mean, sometimes they want it super slow, sometimes they want it uh, sped up a little bit. So once you get those pieces of the puzzle put together, you can go from can't catch a fish to catching 10, 15, 20 in a matter of 20 minutes. Here we go. Not a real big one, but it's a nice, nice male white bass, most likely. You know, this is the typical size for a male fish. The females can get up to, you know, here 13, 14 inches are pretty common, and sometimes you'll even see them 17, 18 inches. But this is a pretty common white bass right here for the Salt River. And man, these are hard fighting little fish. There you go. I'm gonna flick this one back, see if we can't catch a couple more out there. Here we go. Another one of these males. Look, he hit that one there. I mean, he hit it dead on, choked it. 
Now, I've tried a couple different techniques today, thrown a couple other things, but as you've seen so far, they're wanting to hit this little bait in the shallows moving relatively quickly. So, hey, I'm gonna give them what they want. Look at that. See that white milky substance that's coming down from this fish? This is obviously a male. So this fish is actively spawning. Here we go. These are all males and they're all about exactly the same size. That one might be a little bit bigger. But they're definitely wanting this thing fast, which tells me they're in the riffles. They're right up in there dropping their milk in these really, really fast moving pockets. All right, we're gonna turn this fella loose. You know, if we catch a really, really big one, a couple of those I may keep them, but for now, we're gonna turn these loose. Oh, here we go. Look at him running. And this might be a little better fish. Let's see what we got here. This here's a little better white bass. Right where that goes from the riffles hit this deeper pool. It was sitting in there. There he is. And looky there, one cast. Came back down to this little spot where I'd seen a fish earlier. I was talking about casting the same spot over and over and over. Sometimes, you know, if you leave, come back and make a couple casts down there because, like I said, there's certain areas they want to be, and they'll come in waves, you'll catch a couple, and then bam, they may be gone. But come back and try that spot again, you might very well get on them. Here we go. All right, this is either really in the current or this is a really good fish. I don't know what's going on here. Look at there, a little better fish this time. I'm gonna grab him before I pick him up. A little bit longer, just strong. Just a really super, super, super strong fish. I'll tell you what, catching these on light tackle, and like I said, I'm throwing a seven foot medium weight rod on a little jig head here is a one eighth of an ounce jig head. But cast these things out and just pull them up, pick them up, change your retrieve. Sometimes they want it fast. Sometimes they want it right on the bottom. Sometimes they want it up and down. They're right in these little seams where there's a lot of current. And hey, catching them out of the current makes for a much better fight. Today at Giz Creek Lake with Easton Copley. And uh, Easton, you fish alone quite a bit, don't you? A lot, yes, sir. So we're at the boat ramp today, and you're going to demonstrate how to safely launch a boat by yourself. That's right. It's always fun to fish with somebody, mm -hmm. but you know, if you want to go fishing and everybody else has got something else going on, there's no reason you can't yep. do it. Sometimes by you don't have an option. It's either yeah. don't fish or fish by yourself. Let's walk through all the process of launching a boat by yourself. So okay. you've got your boat parked up, not on the ramp. That's right. So you want to stop at an area where you got flat ground so that you can do a quick inspection of the boat and make sure that your boat is ready to go. Right. Tell me a few things you got to look for. Well, the first thing I'm going to do always is go back and put the plug in. Yeah. That's the most important thing. <laughs> um, after I check the plug, I'm going to take my two back straps off. I'm going to leave the front strap tied on. After I take the straps off, take the motor tater off, I'm going to lay it in the truck. I'm going to go through and, and check all my electronic stuff. I'm going to make sure I've got power. And the last thing I want to do is get down here to the ramp have people waiting on me and I'm trying to get the boat started or trying to make sure that my electronics are going to turn on. And if you need to prime your bulb before you start it, that's something you can do before you even pull down here. And once you back down and get close to the water, you want to get out and loosen your strap. And then you're going to get in and back the rest of the way in. And once the boat floats, you can put it in park and get out and either start it and pull it off or push it off. One of the things too is a life jacket. Mm -hmm. So when you get down here, you got slick ramps. Getting in and getting out of your boat is when you're most likely to fall That's in. right. And have your ropes ready to go because in this situation, there are courtesy ramps here. That's right. So if you have ropes on the deck of the boat ready to go, when you pull up to the courtesy ramp, you can quickly tie off. Yep. Or if you don't have a courtesy ramp, a place where you can pull up and tie your boat off quickly because 
If you're doing it by yourself, the entire time you're doing that, your truck's sitting right here. Your boat and trailer is blocking everyone else. So yep. we want to make sure that we get it done quickly, but safely. Yep. Once you get used to it, it's really not hard. You know, you really can't speed the process up by going faster or steer faster. Nope. It's all about being prepped and ready to go, yep. launch your boat, and just being courteous to everyone yep. else. What you do up there is going to make or break everything that you do down here. Well, thanks for walking through that with mm -hmm. me and good luck fishing today. I appreciate it. I hope it works out. <laughs>
All right, so this is our main shop. We have a lot of different types of harvesting equipment. We actually have 17 different types of machines, like our converted rice harvesters from China that we had to bring in. We put Cummins motors in them. We put John Deere components in the back end of them. And then we progress on to larger pieces of equipment, like our large case rotary combines, where we have 20 foot heads. One other thing I might mention here in the shop, it's the springtime, so we're going through all of our drills. We primarily use Truax native seed drills. There's a lot of other types, but the Truax have held up really well for us, and those are the same types of drills that the Department of Fish and Wildlife has for landowners to use through some of their equip programs and other things to help facilitate planting of native grasses, wildflowers for habitat and that sort of thing. Another thing that's been very popular the last few years, especially here at Roundstone, is creating pollinator habitat. Nationwide pollinators have been declining. Behind me here, you'll see some honeybees that we have here, but a lot of native pollinators are also declining. And the native grasses and wildflowers actually provide a lot of habitat for those species. And what we're trying to do now is we're trying to increase the amount of wildflower production that we have to make sure that we benefit those pollinators the most. Besides just increasing it, we're also helping landowners learn how to better manage their current native grasses and wildflower stands to help improve them for things like honeybees, butterflies, and the hummingbirds that we consider pollinators. At Roundstone, we're actually pretty broad in what we do, but at the end of the day, all the native grasses, wildflowers, and wetland plants that we raise are for conservation. And if you have any conservation needs, whether you want pollinators on your properties or you want wildlife or just change it aesthetically for the better, whether you need seed or whether you need advice. And maybe even you just need to know about some of the programs that are out there through different departments of fish and wildlife or different agencies. We would be happy to help. When you think of musky fishing, you may think big fish, big water, but you may be surprised to learn that many musky can be found right here in the rivers in eastern Kentucky. So Tyler, we're out here fishing in eastern Kentucky for the largest game fish we have in the state of Kentucky. Most people that have never done this would expect something a little different. They think big water, big fish, big water, right? Right, right. But you, you're born and raised in Clay County. This is, this is where you catch muskie, isn't it? This is it, this is right here. This little small town river, man. I mean, most people would say it's a creek, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what other areas do you fish in eastern Kentucky for muskie? Oh, uh, we fish. The Goose Creek, obviously, uh, South Fort, North Fort, Middle Fort, and then Buckhorn Lake is mainly our rivers we focus on the most. Yeah, yeah. So this is where this is where you get the, most of your fishing time is in, right here. It's hard. It's it's hard to beat right here in these little little small rivers. And so you really got into musky fishing in high school. High school was when I caught my first fish, and it kind of just hooked me from there, and I ain't never looked back. <laughs> you know. I remember my first muskie, which hadn't been that long ago, and I'm sure that most people who go out fishing, they know every time they drive by a spot, I caught one there, I know I caught one here, and you just don't forget them, do you? You never forget them. It's a <laughs> memory you'll never forget. Why don't you grab that dude right there? All right. It's warm, it's a little humid. These water temperatures, though, are a lot cooler. This isn't like being out on the middle of the lake where it's 80 degree water temperature. There you go. Probably be the last time I do that today. <laughs> Tyler, tell me what we've got now. We got four poles out. We're trolling about 3.2 miles an hour. It's about the perfect speed. We're just gonna focus on the channel up through here. That's where we, I marked a few fish. Okay, they so are. if we start hearing that tick, 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 tick noise, that's when we know it's about we to know get it's busy. On. One person grab a rod, the next one grab <laughs> the net and get ready, huh? Get him in the net. Uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. There's a fish right there. Fish on, fish on, fish on, fish on. Tell me when you got him. You got him? Yep. Here we go. You got a fish on. Here we go. 
Here we go. Look at that. Look at that fish. Keep that rod tip low here. Bring him right up to me and I'll net him. Good one. Here we go. We got him. We got him. All right. Yes, sir. Yes. That's what he's looking. Looky there. Awesome. What a pretty fish, huh? Love it. I'll tell you what. Fish of 10,000. They say it's a fish of 10,000 cast, but. I can't believe I just did that. It's <laughs> a good release. <laughs> I think he, I think I saw a hint of embarrassment on his face. He's like, you guys showed the world that I got duped by that white bait. Right. Yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> and he was. Uh, like I said, that's, that's where we were getting ready to put it anyway. Well, Tyler, we got a fish in the boat. That's all in the boat so far. That's, you know, that doesn't always happen on a musky trip, so that's pretty good. You know, we got up this morning and we tried to catch them on top water and you saw a few fish on the graph under the boat in the middle. We did. They was pretty much suspended right in the channel, so I figured trolling would have been a good method today and it did pan out for us. Now, the last 30 minutes or so we've been watching the graph, we haven't seen anything in the middle, so that means they got to be, I think, on, on the bank. bank. <laughs> so let's make a transition and you know, a two fish day would just be insane. But That'd be great. But and uh, still got good odds. Hey, it's still pretty early, so yeah. we can put uh, some lures on there and start uh, start casting at them. What do you think? Let's do it. All right. So you know, we started off top water fishing this morning. How often do you see a muskie or hear a muskie hit top water? Early in the morning. Your odds of catching a fish on top water, you know, it's about like any other fish. So have you, uh, have you just heard them explode on top water while you're fishing? When they do hit the top of the water, it's it's vicious. I bet. Yeah, yeah. man. You definitely know that that hey, that was a muskie right there. <laughs> ain't no other fish like that gonna blow up on top of the water. It was like that fish caught here last week. Caught him right there off that log. And I bet when I hooked him, he'd come a foot out of the water at that top water and just choked it down. Now what's that called? That's just an old bulldog. Soft plastic bulldog. Bulldog, okay. Fish. Got a fish on fish right on. there. Bait change and a fish on. Oh, he's putting a good fight. Ready? Yep. Here he comes. Right here, right from the net. Green and pink. Got him. Got him. Yeah, man, there's two in the boat. Awesome. <laughs> one trolling, and now you've hooked up with one on a... On a bulldog, just soft plastic bulldog. On a second Bam. musky by noon. Yes, sir. That is awesome. Let's get this That's the way up. we like it. How would it be able to come out here in the morning? We haven't raised a bunch of fish, but we've had two strikes and two fish on. Two fish on. To have a 37 and a 34 incher in a, in a day, in a morning, Awesome day. Pretty Can't awesome. complain at all. What a, what a great little fishery you got right here in Clay County. Yes, sir. Let's get that fish back in. Well, I'll tell you what, Tyler. I really appreciate you bringing us out and showing us your home water. Absolutely. It makes me wonder how many people in the state of Kentucky live by a creek or a stream, and they don't even fish it because they think, oh, it's just probably nothing down there. I mean, we're, we're literally on what looks like a big creek. Yeah. And, you know, there's 50 inch fish that live in here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I always say if you can find a, a hole of water with a foot of water in it, I fish it. There's, there's, there's something always there. A, there's always a chance. I have been, I've enjoyed this just because it far exceeds your expectations. The second you look at it, you don't think 50 inch possible fish. Right. I appreciate your absolutely. time. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for having me out. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here we have Boone Haynes with his very first squirrel. He wanted to submit this because he said Kentucky Field is his favorite show. Thanks a lot, Boone. Check out this beautiful bird taken by 13-year-old Austin Caldwell. This bird was taken on the opening day of the youth season. Congratulations. Here we have eight-year-old Cruz Ferguson who bagged this big tom on the opening morning of the youth season in Davies County. Nice job. We have our first summer holiday weekend right around the corner. 
Make sure you make plans now to get outdoors and enjoy everything the great state of Kentucky has to offer. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission, thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water. If you hold a Kentucky hunting or fishing license, then you have helped make possible Kentucky's wildlife management areas, places to hunt, fish, bird watch, or just let your mind wander. With nearly 100 dotting the Commonwealth, put wildlife management areas in your sights and see more of what makes Kentucky's outdoors outstanding. Get all the info online at fw.ky.gov.